guys! So for those of you who have been following me for a while, you will know that I kind of suck at replying to comments. While I normally never make a video to reply to one comment, this comment stuck out to me. From Nicole with two C's, T, could you maybe do a video on what to look for in a college if you want to be a music major, some good colleges for music, some tips or experiences for when you're actually in college, and tips for finding jobs in performance after college. Or just a couple of those, I know that's a lot. Thank you, Nicole. I know you guys probably thought I was gonna read some sort of hate comment or something like that. No, I was thinking about this question in the shower, at night, when I'm going to sleep, when I'm brushing my teeth, when I'm cooking. This question bothered me. And why though? I mean, I do have a bachelor's of music. I do have a master's of music. I feel like there are some misconceptions about me that I need to clear up. So let's start with what you should do. First, look at your budget, see what school you can actually afford. The other thing to look for are teachers. Who do you want to study? With. Just because someone plays your instrument really well and is a professional and is a teacher does not mean that that teacher is for you. Based on what you want to go into, you want to choose a teacher whose specialty is in that area. And following this, you can actually email that professor asking for a lesson. In terms of when you're actually in music school, just like in any other degree, make sure you study, try not to procrastinate too much, meet your deadlines, make a really good work ethic for yourself practice, show up on time for rehearsals. Basically, you want to be that friendly person, that person who actually practices, that person who's fun to work with. When you're done your bachelor's, you do want to decide if you want to do a master's. In a way, you could say that in the classical music world, if you are a classical music performer, you do actually need a master's. It's almost like a license. But generally speaking, your master's is going to be a lot more streamlined than your bachelor's. When you're in school, you do actually want to be experimenting with what works with you and what doesn't. So even though you're a full-time student, you're actually going to be doing odd music jobs here and there to try out what you like. So for example, for me, I ended up teaching in a couple of music studios and I also coached a Christmas concert which composed of basically a bunch of kids at a church. Obviously, I was making videos at the time too. As long as the job or the gig that you're doing is safe, why not try it? So if things don't work for you, Honestly, no one's gonna remember because you're still in school. You can sort of like, you know, casually drop it off on the side and then move on to something else that you're better at. Now that we've gotten all of the what you should do out of the way, I will now tell you why I personally am probably the worst person to answer this question. When I was in grade school, I had my sights set on becoming a visual arts major. When I started to study artists, when I was in IB art, I was one of those crazy kids that like never saw the light of day. I realized that it would be a mistake if I went into visual arts. This lifestyle of holding yourself up somewhere and really concentrating on, you know, an idea that you are expressing through art. While I get it, I also don't get it. Visual art wasn't actually my passion. It was more of a hobby. I didn't discover this until I was in grade 12. You can see where the problem lies here. University applications coming up. I kind of went up to my parents and was like, I don't know what to do. They asked me, Joe, do you want to think about auditioning for music school? I was part of the Vancouver Academy Symphony Orchestra at that time. We had rehearsals every week on Friday. Every time a concert rolled around, the entire weekend would be consumed by rehearsals. At that point, I couldn't envision myself having that sort of lifestyle. But I think my parents knew better. They sat me down and they were like, why don't you list out the pros and cons of going to music school? I'm like, okay, fine. I listed out the cons, I couldn't actually think of that much. I mean, like, what was I going to lose by going to music school? But I started listing the pros and it was just overwhelming. So I was like, okay, fine, I will audition then. I applied to the University of British Columbia and I also applied to the University of Victoria. Now, you also can't have no second choice. Whatever, I put in English. My older brother went to the University of British Columbia as well. I felt in love with 
the campus. During spring, there's like flowers everywhere, which of course make my eyes water and make my nose run, but they're pretty. Now, to get to the University of Victoria from Vancouver, I would have had to take a ferry. I said to myself that if I got into the English program at UBC, I wouldn't even go to University of Victoria for my audition. Sure enough, that happened. So then I ended up auditioning for the music department of the University of British Columbia, but you have to keep in mind that I was in the middle of the IB diploma, like the last bit where it's like a month of exams. Those of you who are taking IB know exactly what I mean. My extended essay was on visual arts, which I ended up getting a very bad mark on, which of course, you know, just sort of drove the point home for me. Like, yeah, Joe, you probably should go into visual arts. Anyway, I really only practiced 50 15 minutes a day, maximum. So I was auditioning on raw talent. Do not try what I did. I found out later on that I was actually put on the waiting list. The person who had gotten in ahead of me decided to go to a different school. In the University of British Columbia, you can be doing a bachelor's of music but there are three streams in there. Performance, of course, music education, and general studies. I auditioned at first to go into performance, but I was placed into general studies because I was not good enough. At the end of my first year, I auditioned again, and I failed that audition. At the end of my second year, I auditioned a third time, and I finally got in, but it was still quite a struggle. I think you guys can see why I call myself just another foodist, because that is actually exactly what I am. I am actually just another flutist. In terms of music school, I did well, but I did procrastinate a lot. While I should have been practicing and studying and writing papers more, I actually ended up running away to the next door building to watch YouTube videos. Not gonna lie, I watched a lot of Craig Ferguson, Wong Fu, Dan is Not on Fire, Amazing Phil, and I watched their radio show. I discovered this whole thing about hosting and being a YouTuber. I was so deathly afraid of being caught watching YouTube because I really should have been practicing more. Don't do that. I'm just being transparent here. Halfway through my bachelor's, I showed a Kev Jumba video actually to my family and I was like, oh my gosh, isn't this like really funny? My parents actually asked me, you know, Joe, like we, we noticed that you are a very passionate person. You talk a lot. So did you actually want to give YouTube a try? And so that was how Just Another Flutus was born. Now my time was split between school stuff, practicing, watching YouTube videos, and then now making YouTube videos. And I had no idea what kind of crap I was making then. I literally just told myself, I am still in school, so I'm just going to experiment with making videos. I'm just gonna shoot random footage. So if you look at my earlier videos, even on this channel, it is actually in a vlog style. It was obvious that I was a flutist of some sort, that I was going to a music school of some sort. So naturally I got requests to make tutorials, but I didn't want to be held responsible for thousands of people learning to play the flute, even though that is what is happening now and it still terrifies me. I came out with Flute 101 and How to Blow into the Flute months after I graduated from a bachelor's. Some of you will know that I actually grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area. I had moved up to Vancouver when I was about 14 and so I could feel that I was different from my Vancouver friends, but I wasn't sure why and what made me like that. I talked to my parents and they agreed that, you know, it would be good for me to do basically some soul searching. That is actually why I went back to the Bay Area. I actually did not intend on doing a master's. However, during the moving process, my dad was like, you know, Joe, I think you should probably do a master's. You don't need to do it in a big name school, just do a master's. Even he understood this concept of the master of music being this music license. He actually was the one who asked me, hey Joe, like what do you think of San Francisco State? And I'm like, never thought of it. I felt like, you know, oh, I guess this would be easy enough to get into, but also hard enough to challenge me. I applied, I didn't think much of it, and I didn't even look up who the teacher was. Linda, if you were watching, it is true. I didn't know that you were the teacher at San Francisco State. Like, that's how little I cared about my masters. Linda saw that I was auditioning. Linda, being sweet angel Linda, emailed me. She's like, I know you're auditioning. How about we do a lesson before the audition? I was like, 
Oh uh, wait, what? First off, Linda is the teacher here? You have to understand that I went to see the San Francisco Symphony from when I was like a kid. Linda Lucas was there! My brain exploded when she emailed me and I was just like, holy crap, fangirling, what the actual... I don't even know. Then I was like, wow, Joe, you are the worst possible potential music student. The teacher emailed you. It's supposed to be us as students emailing the teacher. It's not supposed to work the way that it worked for me. So don't expect that to happen to you because, because Linda's from heaven, basically. Anyway, after brain explosion and after cleaning that all up and stuff, I actually did end up taking a lesson from her and we just had this moment where she opened up her flute case and I opened up mine and we found out it was basically the same flute except her head joint is a thousand times better than mine. It was amazing. I was actually not auditioning for flute performance this time. I was in a woodwind quintet throughout my bachelor's called the Nachschlag Wind Quintet. We are not together anymore but my gosh, the memories of that experience is just, it's really made me who I am today. I noticed that San Francisco State offers a master's in chamber performance, and I was like, oh yes, that is what I want to do. When I talked a little bit more with Linda about my degree, and when we did actually find out that the chamber music degree was not actually going to work with me, and I actually went to my graduate advisor to change my major from chamber performance to to flute performance, we found out that the computer already listed me as flute performance. That brings me to now. YouTube ended up being the thing that drives everything else to work for me. You guys are the people who are making this channel work. I still can't really process the fact that I am actually a YouTuber now. My entire music career has been a series of fortunate mistakes. Now you know that I am the worst person possible to ask what you should do for music school. The only thing that I can say about myself is that for those of you who are asking about music school, I'm just a little bit ahead of you in the journey, but we're really just the same. The life of a musician is actually this unpredictable. What you think you will be doing now is not what you're going to be doing later. And what you think that you are passionate about now may not necessarily be what you're passionate about later. Use school to experiment with your strengths and to hone your weaknesses and enjoy it. Enjoy the ride. Take what you will from this video, share it with your friends, let everyone know that it's totally okay to feel like you have no idea what you're doing with your life. Honestly, even now, I'm still figuring that out. As usual, my social media stuff is down there. My last video is over there. Subscribe to catch my next video. Take care, and I'll see you there. Bye. <sighs> mm. Whoa. I had a bit of like phlegm or saliva in the back of my nose when I did that. Anyway, okay. So for those of you, I did actually end up going to do a lesson with her um, before the, before the, uh, what do you call it? Before the audition. Wow, I had that crazy brain fart.